So let's look now at the sensitivity analysis report for this uh, investment problem. Um, and actually, if, uh, let's look first at the answer report and let's see what we see there, right? So in the answer report, we see that the, the top part, uh, the total objective function value, in this case, this is total annual return. And we see also how much is invested in each fund. This is the optimal solution. This is, of course, repeated from the spreadsheet, which contains the model, right? So here we see how much money we invest and we see that our return is $68,887.50 and it's exactly the same information here in those cells, right? Uh, original value is what, what was entered before we clicked solve and you remember I was trying just to put $1,000 and zero everywhere else, $1,000 for the first fund. Okay, more interesting thing is about the constraints. We see the the first three constraints, total invested, 10 plus maturity, and 3 plus rating. And right, so this is total invested in everything in long maturity and in uh, low rating, bad rating. And then we see six constraints that are about maximum amount invested, right? They are the variable less than or equal maximum 25% uh, of total fund. And then we see six constraints right the lower bounds these are upper bounds on variables and these are lower bounds you can see they are at least equal to zero right so let's see the status first of all the constraint the first constraint seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars invested uh, we must invest a total of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars this constraint is binding and it's actually not surprising an equality constraint a constraint that is something a formula equal to something else always is binding. it has to be binding right if we have a constraint that is less than or equal greater than or equal like the second or third like those two they might be binding or they might be not binding depending on how things work out uh, however, the equality always has to be binding, right? When we have total invested, it must be equal 750,000. It has to be 750,000, whatever we do, right? Cannot be more, cannot be less. Uh, but if we say we want a minimum in 10, 10 plus maturity, this might be non-binding. In this case, it is non-binding, right? The final value, how much is invested in 10 plus maturity is 562,500. And if you look at the model, right, this is the 562,500. What we wanted, we wanted this at least 50% of 750,000. Right? And it's much more than 50%. It is, it is uh, uh, significantly more. And there is a slack there. We can see also the slack displayed here. Right? We actually invested 187,500 um, more than necessary. Right? So this is a non-binding constraint. And this one, at most 35% uh, invested in bad rating. Uh, and you see this was a binding constraint. Slack is zero. We're e investing exactly as allowed. We, 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 the model probably would choose even more if it was allowed, but this constraint stopped it, so probably it affected also how much return we can obtain, right? Then there are those constraints on, on maximum amounts, and you see the values for the variables 3, 4, and 6, right? Th these are the same values here. Uh, for all those uh, variables and for variables 3, 4 and 6 we see we are at the maximum and these constraints are binding, right? Because the maximum for all variables was 187,500 and then minimum for all variables was 0 and you see there is only one variable that is on its minimum that's variable number 5, OptiPro, dollars invested in OptiPro and this is the binding constraints, therefore. I want you to see also one more thing about binding constraints, which is um, how many binding constraints do we have? Uh, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And notice how many variables do we have in this problem? Well, we also have six variables. And this is not surprising, actually, right? It is always like this, that the number of binding constraints should be equal to the number of uh, variables, right? Uh, why uh, this is beyond the course, but uh, you will see this this pattern occurring repeatedly. Okay. 
So let us let us now look at the sensitivity analysis report and see what we what we can conclude from it. So first of all, uh, let's look at the objective coefficients for all variables, allowable increases and allowable decreases. So as you can see, the objective coefficients here now are written in the number format, not percentage format. So we have to be careful when we look at them, right? The first here is 8.65% and therefore allowable increase and decrease will also be uh, the same units as the objective coefficient so this is actually 0.1% and this is this is of course plus infinity right so what does it tell us it tells us that the optimal solution whatever we obtained will not change if this coefficient is increased by no more than this or decreased by no more than this right uh, things will not change. So let us put this in a more uh, human understandable language. Let me try and write this. So what it is is the current return from ACME chemical is 8.65%. Allowable increase is 0 0.001 so it is actually 0.1% and allowable decrease right is is plus infinity so what it means is I can um, I can uh, if uh, well, I can uh, the solution will not change if we increase this return but by at most 0 0.1 percent and the solution will not change even if we decrease this return by whatever even if it was zero return or negative return the solution would not change it must be that due to other constraints we have to choose this investment right we have to choose this investment due to other constraints uh, we can ask ourselves of course why it might be a little bit difficult to determine for example we might see that this is one of the better rating investments and we're limited to a maximum on 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 other investments right we have to invest a maximum of 35 percent in bed rating two three and five so we must we might have to invest something in acme chemical um, in this case okay going back to the sensitivity so what one might say this is quite sensitive to the first coefficient if it is higher right if it is not uh, 8.65 percent but if it is 8. Point let's say if it is 8.8 percent if it is for example if this return were 8.8 percent .8%, right that's 0 0.15 percent higher right then the optimal solution or if it is, if it if the return is, uh, uh, or uh, could have been higher, right? Could have be could have changed. Sorry, the optimal solution could have been different, right? In a sense, what I want you to understand here, it is, is this is a very uh, small, relatively right, a very small allowable increase. Mm, but if you look, for example. Actually, uh, uh, if you look, for example, at variable number six, subresystems, systems, right? Here, the return that we have is this. The return is this. So, for this was number one, and this is number six as an example. The return is nine percent. Okay, allowable increase is plus infinity, and allowable decrease is 0 0.035 which means 0 0.35 percent okay that is less sensitive you could say we're less sensitive to this value than to this here it is only 0 0.1 percent this is 0 0.35 percent again we could say in what range of changes of this coefficient the optimal solution would stay the same right if we increase this return by whatever value uh, the optimal solution should, should stay the same if we decrease it by no more than 0 0.35 percent uh, then then it should uh, it should um, 
uh, the solution should stay also the same. But if we decrease it by more than this, the solution might change. Remember that these changes, right? If I were to say, if I increase, for example, uh, return for investment one, if I increase by uh, 0.1%, that's within allowable increase. And investment six, I decrease by uh, let's say 0.2%, right? We can't conclude what will happen because a, se a sensitivity analysis, right, for those two coefficients. Sensitivity analysis works only when we change one coefficient at a time. When we change multiple coefficients, we can't conclude from allowable increase, allowable decrease, uh, what will happen, right? But for one of those changes, we know the solution that is optimal will remain optimal after the change of the return, right? Okay, this is enough in the episode. In this episode, and the next one, I'll show you what the sensitivity, how the sensitivity analysis works uh, in the, the, about the shadow prices. We'll talk about shadow prices, and we talk about reduced cost.